All right, guys, before we get started with the video, today is December 30th, 2023, and I want to thank each and every one of you that subscribed and leaves comments down below. You guys are the reason why I continue to do this channel. There's a lot of work involved in recording, and a lot of times I just don't feel like recording, and I try to do it whenever I feel as though there's something worthwhile to record. And I just, like I said, I want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you that has helped build the channel and has given me the motivation to continue forward with it. I love the comments section. I try to read every one of them. At a worst case scenario, I at least give you a heart or a thumb to show that I've at least looked at your comment. And the ones that are out there that's been around for a long time, you guys know who you are. You're some of my top contributors, and that means a lot more than what you would ever believe. Um, I want to wish each and every one of you a happy new year. I hope you all had a great Christmas. Uh, I've got some cool swag here, which my wife got me this shirt from HVAC Tactical. It's got the tactical thing on the uh, sleeve here. It's very similar to uh, like riding shirts for like ATV and um, motocross and stuff like that. So it's a pretty cool shirt that I got. Um, speaking of HVAC Tactical, I will be at the HVAC Tactical Awards in January of 2024 over in Chicago. So if you do happen to see me, be sure to say hi to me. I love meeting the people that view my videos. Anyhow, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started with the video. It does end kind of abruptly at the end there. That's what I've got today. I might try to squeeze one more. I am on call right now, and I just wanted to at least get something. Last week, I got missed because I was working on a video for this thing back here, and that turned into a total disaster. So anyhow, once again, thanks so much for watching. Let's get started with the video. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. What's going on guys? So today we're in the cooler here and we've got some globes right up here that are uh, got water in them. The customer went ahead and took them apart and emptied the water out. So what we've got going on here is the globes filled up with water. So right now they've got the light bulb exposed. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to figure out where the infiltration's coming in at. The light switch, which is right on the other side of this wall right here, comes through and comes through right there. So what can happen is if you get warm coming into hitting cold, it's going to condensate. So we're going to pull this out. We're going to take a look inside the conduit uh, and see if we can plug the holes up so that any of that hot versus cold doesn't come through and hits in there. So let's get up here, see if we can get this bulb yanked out. We'll go ahead and turn the uh, light switch off. But for right now, yeah, look at that. So you've got a ceramic there. It's broke, but you don't probably want to work on this while the uh, power's on because you're most likely going to cause a short. So let's go ahead and turn that light switch off. Got the power off, kind of, because uh, that's a two-way switch, so it's theoretically probably not off, but finding power around this place is near impossible. So I don't have a putty that I would like to have, so we're going to go ahead and stick some in there. And we're gonna go some on right over there on that side there. Now there is a spot where you could have had a wire come in at the top, but that right there is filled uh, with a plug. So what we're gonna do is we're not gonna get stupid, but just mainly just need to stop the flow of air. So we're gonna get in there and stick a little bit of silicone in there, just enough to make that sealed up. And block that air from moving. So we're going to get this other side. I'm going to need my other hand because I'm not going to run that caulk gun right into a potential live terminal on that wire. So just like usual, you get looking in there and you end up finding something. It, uh, we need to fix this wire right here. So we're going to go ahead and pull that on out. As you can see, it's loose and uh, get that uh, fixed. So right here is the reason why you should always twist your wires together. They all just pop out. If they would have twisted these together and then put their wire nut on there, they wouldn't have had this issue. But that's, that's the way I like to do it. I do not like it when they cram all that in there. And we do have one other one here I wasn't thinking about, but we do need to put a little something in there and that one right there. And that very easily could be because this cold air is shooting right on this pipe, which that would have probably been more cold air coming into this fixture than anything else. Like I said, the silicone's not my first choice, but it's what I got on the truck, and it's what we're gonna have to use. Okay, we got it uh, back in together there, and we got a little bit of uh, silicone there, and that pulls out. If you yank on the wire a little bit, it'll come right out. 
So we'll go ahead and get this put back in there and then we'll head over there to the other one, which is over there, which makes sense that that infiltration must have been coming from this part right here. So on the other one here, we're gonna probably have to take it apart there and there on those two screws and then just undo this compression fitting, put a little silicone in there because this one here has some crappy aluminum screws and they are not turning, they're stripped out. All right, so what you know it, there is conduit coming in right there. And that is what's going on. So our infiltration's up on top. I took these out and when it didn't move, I knew that we had an issue there. So we're gonna have to get on top of this uh, box and take a look. You can see that we've had some issues here with some water infiltration here. You can see it right there. So I think what we had is uh, leakage coming down from up above. Yeah, there's a lot of issues. Now, a lot of things in the store are pretty old, um, but uh, with it being zeroed out over here on the other side, I think most of our infiltration is coming in from the top, so that, that'd be the main one we got to get. Okay, so we just climbed up on top here. You can see what's up here. Big old ducks. And uh, right there's our penetration coming down. So it does not look like there's any water up here on the ceiling. But like I said, that's the main penetration right there. Um, there's one there. You can see our temperature sensor there. The box. So there's one over here, which they weren't having issues with. But we'll go ahead and just shoot some from silicone in it. So. Oh man, look at that. How scary is that? You got cookies. You know they're good for you when they don't corrode or get moldy or anything. Definitely, definitely good for you. And you can see they had some silicone already in there. So I guess I'm not a bad guy. I love that ground, the way that was done. That's pretty creative. Um, you got that insulation over there. Let's just pack some insulation in there. So we'll just grab a little bit of this. Oh, there's more cookies. Here we go. That will help isolate some of the heat. You would have more uh, issues usually in the summertime than right now. There we go. That's how we did it. That should help out. I mean, I don't know what else you're gonna do. You gotta love it. Yeah. That one's siliconed up too. So let's just go ahead and pack out with some insulation. I'll try to get some without mouse turds on it. I mean, yeah, I can feel the cold. You can feel cold on that container. So, I mean, it's, if it's getting to there, it's definitely getting down below. And then you figure they run screws in that. So you've got some cold that could be what it mainly is going on there is you got cold air coming through some of that stuff there which you wouldn't figure is a deal but you know what we'll just eliminate it we'll just pack a thing full of yellow goodness and hopefully it helps out a little bit okay and there's the last one okay we went and shot a little extra in there pack that in there like i said this wasn't even uh one of the ones that were getting uh, full of water it was the other ones i'm gonna go back up front and double check a couple others make sure that they're that they're okay i don't think there was any other ones that really needed it one last penetration was through this wall which goes then down here to the switch it's on the other side uh, that bulb was starting to blink a little bit, so I went and grabbed another different one. There was a little corrosion on the pad where it, the uh, centerpiece of the light bulb touches, and I cleaned that up, but now it's not flickering. I'm going to ask them, too, if they're shutting these lights off, because if they're shutting them off and turning them on, you're going to have a temperature difference. If you would have them just on the whole time, which is just like in a freezer, generally you don't have as likeliness to have that happen. So I'm going to see whether they turn it on, turn them off. Okay, so we went around here, there's some things you gotta do for winter, so took off the cover here. 
basically it brings the outside air in during normal times and it has fan cycling but what you've got going on here is that little thing here obviously keeps it sucking from the inside we've got an exhaust fan up here and dampers over there they're all working just want to make sure that it's going through looking at my levels seeing where my levels are at on it seeing if any of them are low looking at alarms and seeing if any of my alarms and stuff are recent like this one here was last done in November of, of uh, back in November. So what I did find over here though, I'm gonna go grab the leak detector to find out, was, and I checked the temperature in that cooler room, it says 36. Well, adjustments are being done off of the sort valves. Your stem up here is how they adjust the temperature. There's no liquid solenoids, so there's really no way to adjust it. But when I was looking at this right here, See, we got a little bit of oil there. That's not good. I'm thinking that thing here is leaking. That's your hot gas defrost. So this here comes off of the discharge. So you come off your discharge, your compressor comes into your oil separator, out of your oil separator up to your hold up, hold back valve. Well, right here, it comes out and goes across to the discharge. The hold back valve keeps the pressure differential down on the other side so that way the pressure on the hot gas is higher usually 20 25 pounds area so that it's able to go up back through the suction line and come back on the liquid line so that's what it does there uh, but that's that's what we need to check to make sure here's your split valves a lot of times we use these for the hot water reheat or maybe the air reheat so i didn't see anything leaking on any of those but we gotta go grab the detector these big systems like this should blast this thing out. Shouldn't have to sniff slow. We don't usually mess with tiny little things at first, but all right, so we're not really getting anything there. Let's see how it does when we put it into a defrost. That one right there is number seven. So let's go over here and put it in defrost circuits go down to seven now we probably can't put in defrost without logging in so hit enter manual defrost seven yep access not high enough so you gotta log in okay now we can hit our next button here go to defrost just hit enter it's gonna pump down which in reality it's not really pumping down and uh, then it'll blast off here in a second. All right, just pop, you can hear it. Oh, look at that. Real surprise. All right, let's go into PPM. We'll see how bad this is. Hundred and something versus thousands, not horrible. Let's go ahead and tighten that up the wrench, see if that'll work. Notice those are smooth. So we're gonna try to get in here without getting burnt. That's high voltage coil there. Of course, you know, everything's in a freaking way. There we go, see if that'll work. About at the maximum possible width of this thing. Yeah, well, I tried. Guess what? That refrigerant costs more than the brass does. Let's see if we can tighten it up. We ain't gonna get on there and chawl it up real bad. Ugh. That sucks. All right, well, I'm gonna need to get a new seal for that. Yeah, that thing's already tight. Now that's really hot, so it's gonna boil that crap right off. We did we came back over here with the circuits we were on seven already i thought it was recording but i wasn't i ended up hitting it we were in manual defrost it went back in exactly the same way brought it up and what i ended up doing is going in manual mode then hit enter so that took it out it's going back to drip mode 
Uh, defrost is going to be in another hour, so I don't want to go too crazy on it. It's only 14 minute defrost even at that. So let's get the numbers off the valve. Usually, you can see a number on there somewhere or on top of the solenoid. What you just heard there was this opening back up. Now that's going to be hot. So you got, usually give it a little bit, now it's come back cold. So you, have, you got to watch, you know, your defrost when these are doing that type of defrost hot gas. You can only have one at a time generally. And you got to stagger them so they're not doing it at the same time. And you, you don't want to boom, 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 boom. You want to want to space them out a little bit. But we got, I think the numbers off that valve. We'll go ahead and get that uh, ordered, get a new rebuild kit, just put a whole new guts in it. All right, so we uh, just finished up the grocery store and we're over here. Got an ice cream machine that we're doing some work on. Newer customer. They had issues with employees not doing the cleaning correctly, not lubricating the shaft there, as you can see properly. That should be perfectly square there on the end, but they wore it out because they weren't lubricating the seal correctly. And it ended up gouging the heck out of the barrel here. So we've got that on there. I've uh, got a new uh, rear wings on seal on it, the black seal, and then the uh, black O-ring. And then uh, ended up purging everything out, so we're good to go on that. But right now we're freezing down. This thing was a total disaster. It had ice cream mix all over inside of it, which I cleaned out on the last go-around that I was here. And so once this thing finishes up, I'll be finishing up because it's Friday, December 22nd, guys. So that means Merry Christmas time for all you guys. So I want to wish you guys all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'll be on call for New Year's. We'll see what kind of calls we get. But we are making progress and hopefully we'll be on the temperature here in a minute. I've already went through here and looked at the temperatures inside. Which our hopper's looking good. It's, count cycles are good. Amps. We uh, cut out at 3.1, I believe it was. And uh, everything's looking good. that out make sure it's good check temperatures here which we should be somewhere around 17 to 18 degree area this is why I use the little pointy thermometer because it tends to respond a lot quicker now if they have less butter fat it's going to freeze down quicker um, which this one's not even that cold and it's very very stiff That usually means they're more watery. It's a cheaper mix. And um, yeah, usually it takes a little more than that. So anyhow. All right, so everything looks good on it. Manager said, hey, you want some more beer? So we got that going. Everything looks fine. So that's gonna wrap things up here, guys. Uh, that's just kind of like a shortened day of what we have going on. We're good. <laughs>